Hi, my name is Sean Wallace. Welcome to my studio. Today I'll be showing you a few different ways to start a painting. We'll be focusing today on landscape oil painting. And uh, I'm going to do a mountain scene and show you how to start with basic shapes and lines and then refine them in the beginning of a painting. Uh, when I began painting, when I first learned how to paint, uh, I probably started a hundred paintings before I ever attempted to finish it. Uh, largely because the starting of your painting is the most crucial point. It's where you decide where everything goes, where your composition happens, uh, where you lay the foundation for a great painting. All happens in the beginning. And so it's crucial to get it correct. And there are a few different tips to help you do that. Um, there's no right or wrong way to start a painting. Um, I'm just going to show you some of the things that I do. In my last video, I showed you some of the uh, tools of the trade, some of the brushes that I use, my palette knife, my paints, my palette, my easel, uh, all the things that I use to paint. Uh, one thing that I didn't tell you about are the painting surfaces themselves. Um, so if you would like to know more about the paints that I use, um, please go watch my other video. And uh, if you want to know more about brushes or anything else, that's all in the other video. Um, but today I'll be painting on masonite that I've gessoed. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. So there are a lot of different ways to begin an oil painting from sketching with pencil or charcoal, uh, doing detailed drawings and then just kind of filling in with paint from there. Um, another way to do it is you just look at the basic uh, values and shapes and block in your abstract shapes first. Um, or you can do kind of a mix of both of those, which is what I'm going to show you today. And really there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, it's just whatever you're comfor comfortable with. Now the key to beginning a painting and the key to oil painting and drawing in general, anytime you're looking at something and then trying to reproduce it on a surface, the key word is refining. You want to start off with basic shapes and then refine those shapes into an accurate shape of what you're looking at or what you're trying to say. So that's what I want to show you today is that process of refining. So when you want to tint the canvas, you want to get a lot of thinner and just a tiny little bit of paint. So it's mostly thinner and that way when you wash it on, it is a transparent coloring of the surface. See how much thinner that is versus how much paint? And you can see it start to run down the board as well. Uh, that, that's how runny you want it. So it's just very little color versus a lot of thinner. So after I scrub that on, I just take a piece of toilet paper or paper towel and I just wipe it off. And then you've got a nice colored surface to start on. And the purpose for this is varied. Some artists do it because they don't want any white coming through in their final piece. Some artists do it because it, it lubricates the canvas, makes it easier to draw. Whatever your purpose is, I just kind of like doing it for both of those reasons. Um, now when I start a painting, I always start with my transparent brown. Uh, looks like this. Um, now, when I'm looking at my scene, I'm starting with a big brush, but I'm looking at big shapes. And just big shapes, and shapes that you would recognize. So I'm looking at my mountain that I'm going to be doing, and it is a triangle. Pretty simple triangle. And then there's another triangle right here. And then I've got kind of a different shape that comes down this way, but still a shape, right? 
Now, the whole time I'm doing this, I'm paying attention to my rule of thirds. Uh, where the lake comes in right here, I don't want that in the center of my canvas. I want to put it into the, you know, when you take your canvas and you mark it into thirds, you, you don't ever want to cut anything in half. And then I've got another block shape right here. Okay? So those are just really simple shapes that you can learn how to draw in, you know, kindergarten. Um, and that's where we start. Sometimes when I start a painting, I will, and this might be important for um, those of you who are true beginners who are watching this. <clears throat> Sometimes when I start a painting, especially when I'm outside painting, I will create a little, uh, just a little splotch that is the shape of my center of interest and I will not worry about shape at all but the little splotch there will give me something to draw into because a lot of times when you begin a painting your tendency is to start drawing some little detail and you draw it too big and then by the time you are ready to go you're peak or your mountain or whatever you're doing grows off of the canvas. I'll show you an example of that. So if I start here and I'm looking at the mountain and I start drawing the mountain, by the time I get up to the peak here, I'm already off of the canvas. Uh, that's something that beginners tend to fall into. Um, so sometimes I'll just make a little splotch on the canvas and then I know that my basic shapes have to live inside this mark and if they don't live inside this mark then they're going to grow too big and uh, become a problem later on. So just to put those basic shapes back in here. Okay. So what I mean when I say to refine is to look at your picture and decide what makes this particular shape not a true triangle. So I'm looking at my peak and I notice that it's not a true triangle because it flattens off right there and then it comes down and comes out a little bit from there. And I notice it's not a true triangle here because it's not really a peak. It is rounded off a little bit, comes straight down, then out again, straight down, out again, and even more straight down. So now I'm looking at it and it's not that true triangle anymore because I have refined the edges to be more accurate to my scene. And that's another um, perk of uh, tinting your canvas is you can actually erase your lines with a little bit of toilet paper. Um, then I notice it comes down this way and then this peak I need to look at it and decide what makes this not a perfect triangle. Well for one it flattens itself off right here then it peaks up to there. So you can already see that instead of just two dorky looking triangles, I've now got something that is resembling more of a mountain peak. And then this thing really is just a big block shape. Until we start adding our values in, that's what it's going to be. So now we've got some structure that is in this area here, but again, they're just shapes. So if we start our shape here, these are more triangles, which is pretty common when you're talking about 
painting a peak. But I'm spending a little bit of time getting my angles right on my triangle. Okay, so those are some peaks inside of our mountain structure there. And so now I just do the same thing with each of them. What about this peak makes it not a true triangle? And this one, not much. It kind of is. It comes out a little bit this way and then drops down. This one flattens off right here and then drops down and then comes back this way before it drops that way. Now one other thing that you can do at this stage is start to look at um, what's happening inside of these things with values. And you can start to draw those shapes created by the values and you can even do that up here too And you're starting to see those look more and more like mountains instead of just block shapes. So this is a fairly detailed drawing that I'm showing you. It's what I would um, suggest you start with when you are painting just because um, starting with an abstract form can be a little bit difficult. But you see I'm being very simple, a light side versus a dark side which is important when you're painting any structure to really define the light versus the dark in your drawing. And that way it doesn't ever get to a stage where it's going to confuse you. <coughs> so then looking at this this part here, really the only thing that defines anything in this mass of trees right here are the subtle value changes. So instead of sitting here and drawing all of those trees, I am just going to put in the big dark shapes where we move from lighter deciduous trees to the uh, To the pine trees. And again, if you get too dark in there, or too much dark, you can come in with toilet paper and just redefine at any time. <clears throat> but I like that dark shape in there. It might be a little too big. So even though it's not part of the picture, um, just for composition reasons, I might want to break that large shape up a little bit. So if I can do that just by planting some other shapes here. 
even bring some up past that, which will bring the eye up nicely. And then finally, our last shape over here, it's lighter in value in some places, so I don't want to just put in a whole bunch of darks. Uh, lines because that wouldn't re really represent what is there. Just a reminder that this is water. Sometimes a, little, a few little downstrokes can remind you of that. So the last little bit of the drawing really is just the clouds. There just simple shapes like everything else. And in fact, they're simple shapes that you don't really have to be that careful on because a cloud's a cloud and it's going to take whatever shape it wants. I hope that this video has helped you learn how to begin an oil painting and how to draw with paint. Join me for my next video when I show you how to take it from the drawing stage through the block-in stage, which is where you add your basic values and colors. Thanks for joining me.